I want to be real today and just talk about the bad side of Shopify dropshipping, the entrepreneur community, and Facebook ads in general, where it's at in 2019. Okay, I really want to speak about it. Hey, so what is wrong with this community? What is wrong with this community? Let's discuss this. So there's a few points that are the most important part that is wrong with this community. One, scamming. Obviously, we all know that one. Two, dropshipping is not easy. Three, Facebook ads is not easy. And four, being an entrepreneur just in general is not easy. Okay, so number one, scamming. All right, so this this is a natural outcome of any any industry, anything where there's money and a lot of money to be made. Okay, you think about like what most people are doing with dropshipping products. They're selling items that have been invented by someone else that's a Chinese ripoff. Now, if that's not the definition of a scam, I don't know what it is, but anyway, that's the general rule. But what I'm talking about is uh, scamming in terms of people such as myself, other YouTubers, other uh, people that create content, what they do is they um, build an audience, okay? They build an audience and then they monetize it, okay? I'm not going to lie, that was part of my intention with my YouTube channel, my Facebook, my email marketing, my messenger marketing, all of that, okay? And, and obviously what's helped me to build that is through trust and, and results, Okay, you know, the stuff that I teach you, I put into action. I'm not perfect myself, but I put it in action and then I try and teach you all. Okay, and and I've gotten results. Okay, I've also had negativity from a number of uh, a number of people. That's inevitable. I'm actually at the moment also there's this uh, website that's given me a bad review, for instance, and that's fine. I don't mind if someone gives me a bad review. In fact, I welcome it because bad reviews mean most of the time room for improvement. And so I, I my testimonials and that, I can show you shit tons of screenshots where I don't try and uh, float my own boat. When I say to my students, can you give me a testimonial? All I literally say, and they can comment this down below, it's up to them, that I just want your honest opinion, okay? I've had mentors in the past that I thought were absolute crap, and they are, um, where they try and they basically psychologically get you to post really inflated type of testimonials for them that, you know, obviously help people get into their various programs that they, they offer, okay? And that's fine, that's marketing, okay? Because the reality is being a mentor Okay, it's, you know, giving up some of my time or their, or their time, selling a, a, some form of digital product, whether it's a, um, a course a lot of the time or like some, uh, like a, a theme or some digital asset, you get a much higher ROI because it's digital. You don't have to ship the product. You don't have to worry about, you know, it's, it's, it's instantaneous and it's, it's great. Okay, in that concept, it is fantastic. Um, however, there's a lot of people that actually take advantage of this. They build an audience and then they monetize them and lie. Now, a number of you would know from larger groups um, on on Facebook from um, Ecom Empires and what is it, e Elite e Elite Ecom Mastermind or whatever. Go in there and and actually check what I mean. For those who know, you know what I'm talking about. But there's been some huge scams that have just come out from some huge name people that have even like, you know, ha nearly had masterminds of their own, but gone to being invited to some of the biggest masterminds in the world. And that worries me. That worries me. Okay. Because it just goes to show how easy it really is to become a mentor. We're seeing all these other YouTube channels that blow up. And what's the first thing they do? They sell a course. Okay. And, um, and then they uh, do a mastermind. Those two things, and then obviously they're mentoring in that as well. But you know, doing a mastermind, it's no joke that people can make 100, 200, 300K quite easily from, you know, blah, blah, blah. And don't get me wrong, people are going to get tons of value. But a lot of these masterminds, in my opinion, have mostly uh, about networking. Um, I have thought about doing masterminds and I'd like to do them in the future. But I don't know. But um, that's something for down the future anyway. But what I've sort of learned from all of this is that a lot of people, they just, it's not hard to 
make a YouTube channel, okay? If I started again and did it properly, I made a lot of mistakes. That's why my YouTube channel hasn't so-called blown up. Um, that all you all the the secret is is making a YouTube channel, make a a few videos based on the main topics of. Facebook ads, primarily winning products. If you make videos on winning products and how to find winning products all the time, so just winning products and winning product research, you'll build a following. You do that, and then you'll start to mentor people, and then you release a course, and then you're sort of known, and, and blah, 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 blah. But it's all just regurgitated stuff. It's just regurgitated. And as I said, I don't follow a lot of those um, with the product research, because as I said, like be between all the tools I've already given you, like comma feed, um, drop site, drop point dot site, sales source, big spy, and how you can do it manually. What more do you really need? Like, what? There's so many tools out there. I am not even joking. I get a number of emails weekly from different product research tools wanting me to pro collaborate and promote their tool, etc., etc. And don't get me wrong, I love their tools, but they're all much the same but slightly different. But anyway. Back to my point of topic, they build this and then that's where they make the real money. And what ends up happening is they sell their course, they grow big, whatever, um, to beginners, okay? And that's cool, that's that's where the money lies, beginners, not experts. Um, because most people are beginners and the experts are much, much fewer. And th then they just go down the path of just making lifestyle videos, you know, in their, in their fancy car, their, their new apartment, their mansion, whatever. They, they take pictures and put it on their Instagram of them, like, reading a book, which they're clearly not reading. They just bought as a prop. And they have their phone, like, you know, that they're a businessman. They're not businessmen. we got to remember that we're entrepreneurs and that we're small fish, okay? And we're small, tiny, tiny, tiny fish. We're completely irrelevant. We're just trying to make money in our own pockets, but we're basically just tiny fish. We're not, like I define a real businessman, like I consider myself to be good at business, but I don't consider myself a businessman. I consider businessmen people that actually start like huge companies, like properly huge companies. All right, those are real businessmen and business women that are fantastic. All right, we're just small timers that are affected by the everyday waves of life. And so th those are the people that I consider that, that we all like to give this amazing business advice. And most of it's crap, like with Facebook ads. Oh, just find this product. I mean, I know I've done this, so I'm a hypocrite. Find this product, go ahead, market it as a simple, simple ad and market it to e-packet countries and um, and you're fine and you're, and you're rich and, and it'll just blow up and you'll make 100K. The amount of students that I've had, in fact, I got an application today for my mentoring program. I'm obviously not gonna name the person. Lovely person and I love their application. They're doing one to 2K a day, okay, and good on them. That is amazing. But they acknowledge that they're not making much profit. Okay, so let's say they're making 2K a day, that's nearly six, that's about 60K a month, right? We'd change to 3K, they're making nearly 100K. So they, make, they could make 100K, it's still not profitable. That's what I've been trying to tell everyone for a long period of time, is that it's not easy to be, it's, it's uh, easy to get sales. Like I can just leave my ads on and I'll get a sale here, there, here, there, and I'm not making money, okay? Uh, I'm not making money at all. Hence why, I try and teach approaches and strategies that help you to make money much more cheaply, okay? No one really seems to care as much, well, that much, you know, about the importance of SMS remarketing, email remarketing, push notifications, um, Google remarketing, YouTube remarketing, Gmail remarketing, display ads remarketing, like um, in terms of everyone's just, let's say, for instance, focused on if you're doing Facebook ads, you should only do remarketing on Facebook. Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding. All right, it makes incomprehensible sense to rely solely on one platform. Incomprehensible sense. And on top of that, I should also add, what's been happening with Facebook in the last six months? Okay? <coughs> Facebook, just like, what's Thursday? The 24th of July. 
The 23rd of July, I couldn't access my ads manager, so I lost money. Okay, I lose money too. I lose money here and there uh, from refunds from Facebook. I'm over Facebook. I think I made that very clear. I am over Facebook. I'm always going to use Facebook, but I'm personally over it. Anyway, and the issues have been become a lot more prevalent. Now, I know Facebook is obviously improving and updating things, and it makes people a shit ton amount of money. I acknowledge that entirely. But the problems are becoming really, really bad for us. Okay, um, really bad. And what I mean by that is that the, the platform itself just goes down again, like yesterday, or just half functioning. I don't know, um, half functioning goes down, um, overspends, um, and, and and a myriad of other issues that have been happening. That I've again said in the last twelve months, this will keep happening. This will keep happening. So what do you do? What do you do? Well, start looking elsewhere. We all know that Google is the biggest search engine in the world. And although I'm not an absolute master, like Google has made such high ROI with much, much less work, which is actually going to be my next video is uh, a Google ads case study. Cause I know people even wanting that Google ads, Facebook ads, uh, Google ads, YouTube ads and stuff. Start using Google, like start using it. Learn it. Um, I'm still learning it and I love Google so much more than Facebook. It is so much harder, but it is so much better. It's important that you understand that Google gives so much more tools that make it much more complex, but also as a result of the complexity, give us so much more control and, and allow us to make much higher ROI. One of the best courses personally that I actually purchased, in fact, the best course I defined was a $10 course on Udemy on Google Ads. And that's the best course, period, I've ever purchased. The most amazing course ever. And that's where I've learned a lot of my techniques. And um, I'm really happy with that course. Personally, I haven't even finished it, but I absolutely love it. So anyway, what you should be doing, you should be diversifying. That's why in my next video, I'll be teaching you a bit more about it. You know, doing display ad remarketing. If you have a winning product, you should, you'll obviously be doing remarketing on Facebook. Make a remarketing campaign on Google. Gmail ads and display remarketing and dynamic remarketing money. It's just like you can make a lot more money doing that at a much, much cheaper cost per purchase. Because you've got to remember, this is why I try and teach about unsaturated products more so than validated products. It, and, and that's where most people can really scale anyway. That's why they get these product research tools, unsaturated products. The, the cost per purchase of an unsaturated product is about 50 to 80% cheaper than it would be a validated product. Um, a validated product, you're looking on average about 10 to $15 cost per purchase. Over the next two years, it'll probably turn to 15 to $20 cost per purchase. It's becoming really hard with drop shipping on Facebook now. Why? Not just because of the cost per purchase going up, but obviously as well, our cost per products going up. The customer expectation is going up. You know, shipping is going up. And, and that's the, all stuff that I personally have anticipated and actually welcome because it means that we're going to get less crap people out there that are just taking advantage of customers. Customers should expect a faster shipping time. Customers should expect quality product and customers should expect quality customer service. Okay, I am personally over the point where people are, are basically just scamming customers. Like what kind of lifestyle is that? You're just not going to build a business regardless. You think that you're going to build a business by just taking advantage of people. Like actually no joke to say that a lot of the applications of my students now um, are, I've actually found recently, a lot of them have been people really wanting to build a brand and I 100% respect that. Um, as someone trying to build a baby brand myself here in Australia, got samples in that wardrobe, funnily enough, behind me as well as actual stock and getting a lot more stock in and working hard on all of that. I can tell you the people that are building a brand, whether it's short or long term, as frustrating and difficult as it is, they're always going to come out on top. Okay, um, uh, an application I just saw yesterday was someone that has been building their brand for a couple of years, and they have quite a good customer retention rate, which is fantastic. That's what you need. That's what you need to know to have when you have an actual business. That's why when you look at most of these drop shipping sites, 
they're like whether it's a one product store one product brand store whatever the hell the trend is i don't care um that pretty much their customer retention rate is like what two to four percent tops whereas real brands can like i've had 30 to 40 percent on average and that's what i aim at 30 to 40 percent okay where your cost per purchase is zero is the ultimate goal of anything if i have to get fewer sales but with no ad spend but i don't even need to explain that do i and that's why i've always said like now we're starting to see that about a year or plus ago it was still mainly just about make a general store blah 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 now thanks to other larger channels and all of that uh, branded one uh, one product stores are becoming a real thing People are now like, well, so you market one product and you brand it. Well, you should have been branding from the beginning. I've always said this. Brands always win. Um, they just always win. They'll always win. These one product stores are fantastic. And don't get me wrong, I think the concept is fantastic. However, I'll never do them. Why? Why, you ask? Well, there's a simple workaround. If I have a winning product, I literally will just make a like click funnel page, a Zipify page, a gem landing page and I've got a one product store there we go that's it I've got a one product store and it's on the same store I don't need to build a whole new store centered around one product I can just do make a niche store find a winning product and then make a landing page around it that is it I don't understand what's with this deal of a one product store where they just do do a free theme Brooklyn debut whatever and they just make a really nice description that why don't you just make a landing page on a on a general store and you could do or something and there you go done it's the exact same thing and and that it's the exact same principle just slightly different approach okay and we all know that to to be the reality of it and so if you have a, a niche store name then there you go you're fine so that's my recommendation um recommendation there i also want people to understand that being an entrepreneur okay one of my other key points is, is not easy um Again, one of the things that I like to actually admit is about taxes. So here in Australia, you know, if I have customers here in Australia, I pay GST, government service tax, and then I have tax, my income tax. And obviously my income tax is based on my my income thresholds. And here in Australia, you know, you, I'm not sure what it is in other countries, but here in Australia, you know, you pay more tax based on your tax bracket. Okay, and then your tax bracket is determined based on your profit. Okay, and as someone that's had a lot of profit, uh, partly because um, of you know my course mentoring and all that, where it's huge profit margins. Okay, um, I have had a much higher tax bracket. You know, like had to build company and all of that jazz. Okay, to to reduce it, but you still have a lot of tax, and it will be the same thing as when you scale your business. You know, you're gonna scale your business and I highly recommend getting an accountant, really important, and a lawyer, especially if you're building a brand, get a, uh, an accountant and a lawyer to help you legally build your business, okay? Reduce your overall tax. And you know, that's the thing. Like people, people say, oh, yep, beautiful. Run these Facebook ads. And um, you know, the average ROAS most people have, from what I've heard from the community, I thought it was like 1.8, is 1.6 to 2.2, right? Anyway, and people are like, yep, I've scaled to 100,000 with a 28% profit margin. Okay, now that is is incredibly good. Good on them. I'm proud of them. Cool. I don't care. Good on them. They can make their money by their Lambo. I, whatever their life is, they can do that. But that's not the case now, is it? Okay, that's not actually the case. So on average, about 1% of that is gonna to go to transaction fees alone. So you're gonna have at least 1% transaction fees, generally one to 2% transaction fees. So let's make that from 28 to 27. You're gonna have your tax, okay? You're gonna have your tax. And again, using the basis of a 10% is the average for most economies around the world. There we go, we're at 17%. You're gonna have VAs. Okay, and as you scale, once you are at six figures, you're gonna at least have two VAs. Like if you're not having two VAs at, at, at six figures, you're probably gonna be overworking yourself because you'll have like a, you would have at least a VA, two, preferably two VAs for customer service at that point. You would have it obviously at minimum one. And you will might you might have a team where you're gonna have graphic designers, product research people, web developers, blah, blah, blah. 
So it's it's no joke that on average what I've found is about 2%, you can take 2% out for your cost of VAs because most people use Upwork and then you have your Upwork fees. And so, you know, you're paying 4 to $5 an hour and they're working 20 hours, blah, blah. You know, you, you can easily take off, I would say, 1% to 2%. All right, so we're at about 15%. Now, don't get me wrong, $15,000 of $100,000 in, in let's say a month is absolutely phenomenal in my opinion, absolutely f phenomenal. But then obviously you're going to have chargebacks, refunds, um, and that as well. So you can take off another percent, you know, at 14. So still a lot of money. But the reality is, most people aren't even hitting hitting that really at all, um, because once they actually uh, count for everything, um, then they're actually not making really anything at all, um, and that's because. As well, they, they haven't actually calculated as well their overall um, daily profit. They haven't done that properly. And again, because you know, you're going to have apps. You have your apps, you have Shopify, and that, and that adds up. They haven't properly accounted for it. And then on top of it as well, they'll have some extremely good days and then extremely bad days based on Facebook ads you know, going down again or, or just not working properly. And that happens. But all the people care about, oh, you've got $100,000, you must know what you're doing, tell me, teach me, teach me, you know, mentor me, blah, blah, blah. And, and logically that makes sense, but this is why like, I try and teach the reality that, like, making $100,000, I've done it, I've had plenty of students do it, I've had students doing it right now, but I, that's why I teach about diversification more than just... Oh, Facebook ads, Facebook ads, Facebook ads. And it's literally made no sense to me this 100% that like Facebook ads is like the equivalent of, of a religion in our community and that everything else is irrelevant. As I said, I've watched YouTube channels and seen other professionals where they just do Google ads. They not might not be getting the popularity that others are, but they're making insane profit margins, okay, with much less work. And you should be considering that. Okay, but most people don't really want to consider that because Google is a lot harder of a steeper learning curve and it takes a lot longer. All right, and so that's that's generally why most people don't care. Um, I'm not saying all, but most. Uh, I know that a number of you do, and that's why I'll be making more Google videos, and I really enjoy them because they're very, very, very detailed, and I love the structured approach to it. So you should always understand that when, and you see the question inevitably, like what's the profit margin? And people will say 28%, but that's actually just purely based on the ads to product plus shipping expense, okay, into based um, into their profit margin. Okay, that's never the case. They're gonna have their taxes, they're gonna have their refunds, they're gonna have their VAs, they're gonna have their apps, um, they're gonna have chargebacks, they're gonna have all these miscellaneous expenses that come up that really add up okay to at the end of the month um and and that's what you should always keep in mind most people i honestly believe are probably operating on a 10 percent margin if they're profitable okay uh from my analysis now don't get me wrong making ten thousand dollars a month is great but let me ask you this is that ten thousand dollars going to last you the rest of your life nope no it's not it's going to last you however the fuck long you decide to make that last of course which leads me on to my next point, investments, okay? So as I said, like with uh, mentoring courses, masterminds, uh, digital products, um, helping the community or whatever, that's all fantastic. And don't get me wrong, I love those. There's been many, many great ideas and uh, businesses made from this. But what you should be doing with your investment is not buying a Lamborghini unless like, the people that can buy the Lamborghinis have built brands. So like when we see these YouTube channels and that where they flash their cars and that, their brand is their personal brand. Building a personal brand has stupidly high profit margins. Okay, stupidly high. Imagine if my channel had 100,000 uh, based on the ratio of conversion and all of that. I would literally have so much money I wouldn't even know what to do with it. In fact, I have so much money I don't even really know what to do with it now aside from investing it. I'm a shareholder, or a day, not a day-to-day -day shareholder, but I like shares. Um, and here in Australia, we have great opportunity for dividends. Um, and so one of my mates, Nick Armenis, many of you would know him. He's a Google Ads specialist, a uh, great guy um, that I've been friends with, very good friends with for a long period of time. He's been very supportive of me. And uh, thank you, Nick. So he's in the shares as well. And we speak about this quite a lot. Um, what you should be doing with your investments 
is obviously paying the roof over your head, paying the bills, putting food on your plate for yourself and your family. But what you should also be doing is looking to invest that money into long-term assets. And this is where it comes back to what I said about businessmen and businesswomen. So if we look at companies like Facebook, Netflix, um, uh, Google, all of those, right? They're all massive, massive enterprises, okay? Um, with guaranteed income every day, like just absolute 100% guaranteed. It's just a matter of how much. Because they're at the stage where their company, their brand is so heavily established, the only thing they need to worry about is increasing their profit margins from, for their investors. And so it's with this that it gives us a unique opportunity, does it not? It means that we can invest in companies that are year in, year out are going to make money. Year in, year out. Because remember, we're entrepreneurs. People will find a winning product, they'll make a couple hundred thousand dollars in sales, it'll die off, they'll make some money, but that's not gonna last them the rest of their life, and then they're back to square one, aren't they? So that's not really building a brand. That's that's just short-term gain, long-term pain, really. It's the opposite effect. They're just, something's gonna come in, it's gonna die out, and then they're gonna have to retry. And don't get me wrong, you can definitely keep doing it, but wouldn't you rather build a brand? So anyway, with these investments, I put my money into these companies and it's basically what I define as like having a TDA. If you don't know what a TDA is, a term deposit account, except you have the money in a share company, like a, a listed investment company. And um, the company, it makes you ROI, return on investment obviously, um, through the form of a dividend and it pays that out. Now obviously companies and that fluctuate, but if you invest in like what's defined as blue chip companies, then again, like they're guaranteed going to make money. They might go up and down, such as anything in life, but they're going to always be there. All right? <coughs> Sorry. You know, you look at, for instance, here in Australia, you look at the, the big banks. In here in Australia, the big banks are the pillars of our very economy, okay? Uh, without, if the banks falter, our economy will literally collapse in on itself. And it's pretty much the same for any economy. They are dependent on the bank. So we know where all the money flows. We know that these companies are 100% mandatory in our societies. Put your money in them. You may not make huge money year in, year out. It may not increase. It may just plateau. It may slightly go down. But you're always going to make money, aren't you? So to give an idea, okay, I've invested my money and I now make about 25000 a year passive. Okay, That doesn't sound like much to most people. 25,000 a year. Now, again, I, obviously I still have my taxes, all that jazz, so that's gonna reduce that. But, um, you know, with, with my shares, 25,000 a year. Now, I live a very minimalistic lifestyle. I That's why like, I live in, in this place. I love my place. Um, I don't have no desire for sports cars, no desire for mansions, no desire uh, m even much for travel aside from just going for a drive or overnight stay, that's, that's what I enjoy. So I have a very minimalistic lifestyle, which leads to a very small required annual budget to live. Okay, and so that money, actually, I could stop doing everything right now. Everything, everything I could just turn off and I would be fine. But, you know, I've got to consider the fact that I'm in a relationship uh, over time. Uh, we are looking to have kids and I do want to increase that. And I do want to increase that so I can spend more time with my family. And that's why I say building a brand is the solution, all right? Building a brand is the solution. You may not, let's say hypothetically you make $100,000 in a month from your drop shipping store and you make that money and you, let's say you make $20,000, great. I personally would rather make, let's say $10,000 in revenue a month with uh, maybe one to $2,000 profit, let's, let's say $2,000 profit over the course of a year to nearly make the same as I would in a month, but I'm building a brand, I'm working less, I'm building a brand, getting a customer base, and I'm building an asset, okay? That's what building a brand is all about. It's an asset, all right, an asset. Like, um, as opposed to when your dropshipping store dies, your asset dies, doesn't it? Like, you got nothing, you got nothing. And whereas if you build a real brand, you've got that asset base, which is your customer following. They'll come back and they'll buy from you again. I've worked with a number of stores, um, client stores and that historically, that they um, have had tough times, but their customer base have come back and bought from them and it's allowed them to retain income, retain their income. And they never would be able to do this if they were just, let's say, like a, a dropshipping store. 
Okay, if they're because the shipping times and the product quality are generally crap, we can handle customer service. Handling customer service is easy. You can get tons of tools for that, hire VAs, and you're done. That part is not hard. That's making sure you have a good VA. That's the hard part. But in terms of shipping and product quality, people forget about the importance of that. You should be looking at using apps like EP Roller. You should be looking at using private sourcing agents. I got my Skype open there where I've got two of my sourcing agents where they're helping me to find uh, baby products that I want to market that I'm going to be uh, branding here in Australia. And, um, and I know that maybe it might take three months, maybe it might take six months before it starts to generate profit but it's going to generate profit as long as I'm consistent with it, okay? And as as long as you do the same, you will achieve that. Now, I understand that this is also a bit of a hard topic for those who are on a limited budget. It's easier said than done. That's the reality. Hence why getting sales quick and that is, is so very important. And I'm sorry to say, but I just don't accept that as an answer anymore. You should be, you should have enough money to build something tangible. Okay, so what you should be doing is please, please save your money. Please work a nine to five job or something as much as we all hate it, okay, and save your money, okay. There's simple ways you can save money. If you sat down most of the time and you opened up a Google Sheet and you were honest with yourself, okay, and you're honest with yourself about what your expenses are, look at your bank accounts and see your expenses, then you'll probably easily see some ways to actually save money and then you can actually start to build a brand. And uh, and I assure you that those people are making the real money. I mean, you look at even some of the drop shipping brand stores, they're the ones really making the money because they've just focused very heavily on their customer base um, as much as possible, and it's worked very well for them. So it does work for drop shipping, but I personally just don't like long shipping times. Um, I don't like long shipping times. As a customer myself who likes to buy through various e-commerce brands. Um, I don't like long shipping times. I like to know that I'm going to get a quality product and with a generally fast shipping time. I don't accept a two to three week shipping time. I don't think that that is acceptable um, in this day and age where people can buy through Amazon and that we're charging them a premium to buy through us as opposed to most of the products being on Amazon. And yet we're not giving them an, a, a premium experience. It's just not fair on the customer. Um, and that's that's what I really want you to emphasize on. Emphasize on your customer. It will always come back to you. Okay, so that's my discussion on brands. Now, back to lastly uh, about scamming and that in this community. I seriously just want to urge you all, because this is probably the most important one, please be very dubious of, of many of these channels. If you look at it, I wish I had a graph, um, but I don't. Uh, but you look if you look at it as in like a sort of a graph, that uh, Facebook profit margins decreasing and an increase, and you'll see a strong correlated increase of YouTube channels. Um, and that's just because the, the margins are much higher. They can make a YouTube channel start to get 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, blah, blah, blah subscribers. And then they'll, mo most of the time they start off, not all the time, but most of the time they start off with mentoring. Um, and uh, but eventually most of them pretty much always sell a course and then they'll start to make money from their course and that's their digital asset where they're huge profit margins because all they need to do is have a camera, microphone, uh, some blah, 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 and they can upload videos, get people interested, get eyeballs, and then one in 2% of people will actually convert and actually buy their premium content and then they can do that. So to give an idea about the honest approach that I have with my personal brand is one, I actually just give a shit, okay? And um, I actually do give a shit. I spend a lot of time doing research every day, whether it's watching other people's YouTube videos, whether it's watching um, a, a new course, I always have a course that I'm watching and and trying new things. Um, and, uh, and, and two, you know, I do wanna monetize my personal brand. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna acknowledge that entirely. But I, I put a lot of effort into my, into my personal brand. For anyone that's in my course, for instance, already, they, like I get a number of comments of people just saying that my course is the most updated out of them all. And, and I'm not trying to say that to say go buy my course. I'm saying that as a general fact because I do care. Every week, I'm always planning at least one to two videos. 
okay? One to two videos, and most of the time you look at most of these other channels, and they'll do a different approach where what they do is they'll do a mass upload of about, I don't know, let's say 10 videos, 10, 50, I don't know, whatever, whatever it may be, and then they'll do a, a sale of it, you know, they'll release it as V2.0, V3.0, blah, blah, and don't get me wrong, that works, that works well, but, um, I don't know, I just, no, nah. and so I, um, I can do the same thing, but I made a commitment to my to the people that purchased it that I said that I would update it, and I will, and I continue to, and I'm very proud of that. You know, from where where my course started, for instance, was 55 videos, and now it's like 110, 110 videos, and and it's been a lot of work um, uh, getting to that point and and teaching people these skills, and I've been really really working on that, and so. Anyway, you're going to see a lot of other people do that and they just monetize their audience and that's how they're able to buy their cars, do their lifestyle, do the travel thing. Please don't get sucked into that. The reality is most of the people that are doing the influencer lifestyle thing, most of the time, they're not like building. Once they get to, let's say, a point that the real secret to drop shipping is outsourcing. Okay, if you have the budget that you can get people to do product research, you can do people to do product listing, you can get people to do the Facebook ads, you can get people to scale your Facebook ads, um, and these are all through, let's say, like Upwork, um, and and just test, 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 test. You can make a lot of money. That's that is a secret that anyone can do. You just need the money for it. That's your only chain, chink in your chain is having the money to do that. And so what these larger people do is that they just do that, they get the sales, and then they use those sales shots as proof when they actually don't even probably know what's going on aside from maybe they have a meeting on Zoom or something or, or on Skype or talk to their team, like, oh, what's going on, blah, 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 I want to use it for my personal brand. So then they what they do is they hire a photography team to take heaps of videos, pictures, whatever, and upload on Instagram, upload inspirational videos uh, and, and headlines, you know, like, don't give up, bro, blah, 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 um, all of that crap. And people are like, oh, wow, you're so amazing. Blah, blah, blah. And it's just it's just not true. Um, you know, and I, I don't understand what's with this infatuation of just Instagram stories and just their cards. I genuinely just like, wow. But anyway, each their own. If they have the money to it, that is their choice, their life, their rules. I cannot control that. And there is nothing I can do about that other than whinge like a little baby, right? Okay, because I do whinge a bit. So please be dubious of this, okay? And that's why I say that the smaller channels generally are better. Why? Because they're having to work harder for their audience, okay? You think about that, working harder for their audience, um, and they usually provide a lot more value. You'll actually see that larger channels, not in all cases, but in many cases, they provide the regurgitated content. They just... And, and a lot of these channels that start growing just provide the same regurgitated content, regurgitated content, regurgitated content, just with a different face and a slightly different strategy that they say is going to change the whole world, which it bloody oath isn't, which is an absolute load of crap. It all comes down to the same fundamentals. All right. Now, lastly, I wanted to talk about the recent changes with Facebook ads. Uh, a number of you probably have already heard it about CBO campaigns. Um, campaign-based optimization. People, uh, Facebook just announced, I believe, earlier this week. <clears throat> yeah, it was earlier this week, I think. Yeah, um, that it will be delaying the mandatory transition to CBO till at least February 2020. Now, that pretty much just acknowledges the fact that I've always sort of said that CBO isn't great. Okay, it's not a perfect strategy, but it actually does work quite well. CBO does work well. But the main problem that people have with CBO is the primary thing around it overspending on crappy ad sets and it underspending on good ad sets. I don't have a problem with it. Why? Rules. Whether you're using my ecom sheet, a number of people have purchased that and thank you to everyone who supports me. I'm putting more, putting more work into it actually because I really enjoy it. And it helps me. <laughs> it helps me in return because I'm making rules for myself and I just give it out. I'm like, hey. Anyway, but basically, uh, rules are the solution. And I guarantee you that's all Facebook's working on. You think of CBO, right? Okay, think of CBO. What its goal is, is it's a budget allocation uh, algorithm or strategy, right? We make the campaign, we turn the dial on, set it to $1,000 a day, and it's going to, between our 10 ad sets, go and do whatever. Do whatever it feels is best. Okay, and think of it like this, um, if you're going on an aimless walk, right? You don't know where you're going, you're just walking. And it, 
But anyway, that's actually a bad example. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to divvy up the budget in theory, but it's going to determine what it defines as the winner. And what it defines as the winner is not always the winner, is it? Such is life. We all know this. Anyone that's scaled using Facebook ads in any regard will know that some Facebook ads will do very well and some will do very bad. And on top of that, ads will do very well one day and then very bad the next day. And why is that? No one knows. No one No one knows. There's no definitive answer. There will never be a definitive answer. My hair is really bad. I'm sorry. I need to get a haircut. Anyway, there will never be a definitive answer. Um, no matter what anyone says uh, in relation to a winning ad set. But there is ways to make your campaigns a winning campaign. And that is just with automated rules. Um, and the approach that I learned and that I now take is just using Facebook automated rules. Um, you can use third-party tools, um, and there's plenty of them out there um, that can help that as well. And they, admittedly, these third-party tools do have more functionality control, but you're going to be eating into your profit margins a bit because a lot of them take your revenue. Okay, But the reality is that Facebook have nearly all these equivalent rules. We just need to slightly jig them, and you're fine. Okay, CBO is geared towards increasing our margins, and I have noticed an increase in margins using CBO. And I've also then noticed an increase in margins using CBO with automated rules. Because you think of it like this, you've got your, let's say, $1,000 budget. And like I just saw one of the comments of people, like, oh, I had a $100 budget on this CBO and $60 went to one ad set that did absolutely crap. And as a result, you know, my, my, I haven't made any money today, blah, 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 blah. Well, if you had an automated rule, okay, if you had an automated rule that said, all right. Well, today, if um, if I have if my ad set, let's say hypothetically, just as an example, if my ad set has spent um, my average cost per purchase and it doesn't have a sale, well, then kill the ad set because you know your average cost per purchase is let's say fifteen dollars and it spent sixteen dollars and hasn't gotten a purchase. Well, why have it on? Because my overall campaign is this over the last two, three days. So why should this ad set just be allowed to go on the hope that it's going to do well? And so there you go. You're not going to have any problems. You're going to set very strict rules. So for those worried about CBO, I'm not. Um, but I noticed like in some of these big posts people are asking about, it just you just need automated rules. You don't have to use my sheet. I, I, I'm obviously going to promote my sheet. But you should be just using some form of automated rules. Okay, seriously, just use automated rules with Facebook. I'm also actually, for those wondering, developing or uh, trying to learn um, uh, and develop automated rules for Google. But Google is a lot more complex because you can like make rules on everything, like the placements, the age demographics, their behaviors, their um, income brackets. It's absolutely ballistic. So trying to find, uh, make rules there. Um, I'm starting with some basic ones and I plan to improve them over time. Okay, so for those worried about that, don't get too worried by that. Please also just be very dubious um, of you know the, these channels that like that just regurgitate the same content. Okay, you've probably all seen enough videos on how to find winning products, how to uh, like or winning product reveals and that to know what a winning product looks like. It's all about putting your hat in the ring and just testing it until it works. But again. Not that that strategy doesn't work and I am condoning it, but I would highly recommend that the solution to all of these fluctuations, Facebook ad fluctuations, product fluctuations, supplier issues, um, uh, everything, um, shipping and all of that, build a brand. Okay, that is the honest goal. And again, like I look at all the brands that I've ever interacted with and that, that I've gone back to time and time again, and I think my LTV, lifetime value, must be insane must be insane. They just focus on providing uh, a good customer experience with good shipping times and a good product. And, and their LTV just goes through the roof and they focus on that. They focus on that. They know that money is not going to come through the door immediately, but they do know that money will, is there and that they just need to be consistent about their approach and their unique business proposition, which is, you know, so you got your unique selling point being your, like a lot of your product, but your unique selling point as your business. Okay, every business is different. There's hundreds of thousands of businesses all in the same industry, but they all make money because they all have uh, a different slogan, a diff slightly different approach, and they build up their clientele list. And those those brands will always win. All right, so 
please just always focus on that. That is my advice to everyone. And I absolutely assure you, whether it's in six months time, whether it's in two months time, whether it's in a year, you will come out on top. Okay, you will come out on top and then you, you won't look back because my approach now is I don't want to have many stores. I find it a pain in the ass. I want to have one store that's a brand store that I have control over that's going to bring me in income every year that I can continue to learn from, work on the ground on because I, I love doing YouTube. I love, um, I love teaching people. I want to keep being on the ground, having control and, and teach people. Anyway, and keep building the brand, getting word of mouth, increasing LTV, and make passive income. I've uh, honestly come to realize in the last few months, I've been taking a bit more of a step back, um, and uh, and it's made me feel much better. I now do a lot more reading. Um, I watch more shows. I like to watch documentaries. I really enjoy documentaries. They're my type of thing. Uh, I'm exercising a lot more. I go to gym. I spend more time with my partner and my family, my extended family. And I'm happy. And I've come to realize one of the biggest problems that I personally had was I had an inferiority complex. Um, there was a period where, uh, for uh, quite a, pe- a period, I would say at least six months, where I was like, "Why aren't I growing? You know, I want to be, I want to be someone that gets invited to masterminds, collaborations with with other well-known YouTubers and stuff. And and why do they get all this um, success?" In, in their personal branding and, and I don't um, and uh, I've I've that's why I've been disconnecting myself more I mean um, I, I don't even have my phone at my desk anymore because I find I look at my phone too much um, and I've been trying to move myself away from from those negative thoughts into positive thoughts uh, because although they've had their success and that they have their life and that and good on them for their success Congratulations to everyone with their own individual success. You should always be proud of that I need to acknowledge about my success and that you should always do the same and so um, I am really trying to build my brand because I want that to be my success I want it to be my my asset and I want to be proud of something that I've done so I can build an asset that's going to bring me in money so I can spend more time with my friends, family, loved ones, and just help people more around the world. I'm actually now, I've come to the point where I'm just happy with how my channel is, um, as opposed to looking at all these other channels and how I can, you know, do what they're doing that's trending or whatever. Uh, Just do what I enjoy and what will help you to achieve success as well. Because what I enjoy is teaching. And I like, I'm a very thoroughly orientated person, very detailed orientated. Hence why my channel is defined as advanced. Um, although I believe I try and explain myself quite well, but, um, and I want to keep that trend going. I actually enjoy that. I've decided that's my unique selling point is that I'm a more advanced teacher in this space. And I'm, a, I'm actually very, 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 very damn good at building brands. And that's why I want to build this brand and I know that it's going to take time and it's going to require me to have patience and the virtue to understand the goal of my business. And the goal of my business is to build longevity, not short-term income that I can use for testimonials. And that should be your goal as well. Okay, In every element of life, that is your goal. All right, so make sure to keep that in mind. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. This has been a very long one. I know I've been sort of a bit topsy-turvy throughout the video. I apologize for that. My thoughts get somewhat conflicted throughout it all. So that's why I do that. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you take care and goodbye.